This is Zaytuna College, located on what is called Holy Hill in Berkeley, California. God it's said, unique because you know Zaytuna is the steal. first accredited Muslim liberal arts college in the United States and one of the few in the world. Zaytuna was co-founded five years ago by internationally acclaimed Islamic scholar Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. We all felt that really what we needed was not so much a seminary, but more of a, a liberal arts college because a lot of the problems in religious education today is that it is solely religious education. Mm -hmm. And so the type of person that it produces um, is often not as well-rounded as is necessary to, to fully integrate religion into a society. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf grew up in California with a Roman Catholic father and a Greek Orthodox mother. He was taught to be a seeker and converted to Islam as a young man who then journeyed to the Middle East to study under some of the world's top Islamic scholars. By and large, most people are completely in the dark about the incredible impact that Islamic civilization had, not just on the sciences, but on theology. St. Thomas Aquinas was heavily influenced by Averroes of Spain. Integrating Islam and the Western culture is a notion students like Aisha Ibrahim find very appealing. She graduated from high school in Chicago one day and rushed out here the next to begin studies at Zaytuna. For us, it's very important to hold on to our faith and to do that in a, in a space where it's encouraged. To yeah, engage your intellect, but also remember like it goes with your faith and they're not you know, separate. Mahan Mirza is the dean of faculty at Zaytuna. Muslims need to be grounded in their own tradition. They need to inherit great ideas of the past, not just uh, from the Islamic civilization, but from the Western civilization uh, in general, because we are in America. You don't have to go very far to realize uh, or recognize that the two are actually this part of the same heritage. They're not two different legacies. What we feel we're doing is reviving what the liberal arts tradition was within Islam. All students are required to learn Arabic so they can go on to study the classics. Then they take um, mathematics, uh, astronomy and the history of science, economics, uh, philosophy, ethics and politics. It's one of the best places I've ever taught. Professor Mark Delp is the only non-Muslim on Zaytuna's faculty. He teaches philosophy and logic. They look at education as a process of, of attaining wisdom. So the real interesting thing, which makes it like the Dominicans in a way, is that they look at this as their spiritual formation. It's not that they don't worry about getting jobs, but they, they're, I believe, truly convinced that if they get this spiritual formation, um, they'll be ready for anything. There's a religious motivation to study as in studying is a form of worship. And you don't, you don't really find that anywhere else. Here you find that, and that there's this huge emphasis on what you're doing is not only important to you, your relationship with God, but also to the community of Muslims. But every John Rapoulos is a convert, born, has a bachelor's degree from St. John's, a great books college, and hopes to become an Islamic scholar. Today, he's delivering the weekly sermon at the Juma prayer service on the campus of UC Berkeley, although there is no formal connection between the two schools. One of the earliest stages of mercy for us is in our mother's womb. That's where Allah is forming us. The Zaytuna student body is comprised of 60 students. All together, they are all Muslim, although that is not required. Each will take the same coursework, and those who graduate will have a, an accredited degree in Islamic law and theology. Some may go into law, medicine, more scholarly work. What is especially evident here is that the students are here to learn. Students come to Zaytuna from a variety of backgrounds, religiously and ethnically. Some are converts. The Muslim community has contributed about $30 million to the operation of Zaytuna. Tuition is $15,000 a year, plus room and board. And it is an important school policy that students do not graduate in debt. Colleen Keyes is Dean of Student Affairs. There's no student who applies to Zaytuna who is turned away for lack of funds if they're qualified. So if they meet our standards, our academic standards, and, and th there's a fit between who they are and what we offer, right. we fund them. And there are students, many students here, are on a full ride. 
It is a requirement that all students do volunteer work in the community, like Habitat for Humanity or planting trees for the Forest Service. Because our belief is that the way to serve God is through serving human beings. And that can be, you know, as a lawyer, as a journalist, as a teacher, as a doctor. Um, but the idea that we're here to do something more than benefit ourselves is very important to Muslims. Although the education is co-ed, there are some distinct differences between Zaytuna and secular colleges. Alcohol, for instance, is forbidden. So is dating. In school, everyone, we'll all study together. But, you know, it wouldn't really be seen as appropriate if a girl and a guy were to go out by themselves off campus to study together. Dating is forbidden uh, because we don't, Muslims don't date before they marry. This is, after all, an Islamic school. Sheikh Yusuf says the goal of Zaytuna is to restore Islamic education to what it was a thousand years ago when Jewish, Christian, and Muslim scholars worked together. We're at a particularly dark period in the Islamic tradition, unfortunately, but that does not in any way uh, dim the light of its civilization uh, in the past. Of Muslim terrorists, he says they represent religion gone bad. Unfortunately, just as other religions, extremists have gone bad over the years. One out of every four people on this planet is a Muslim. The idea somehow that some evil morality could have spread like that uh, and lasted. I mean, evil moralities can spread for very short periods of time, like Nazism or fascism, but they don't last. The things that last, last because they have permanent truth in them. Inside Zaytuna, there is a palpable awareness that every time ISIS strikes, they will suffer too. Even though Sheikh Yusuf says they are as horrified as everyone else. We're taught always to, to believe that Islam is true, but to challenge our own understanding of Islam. And, and that's something a lot of zealots certainly fail to do that. Their assumption is always that I'm right, uh, God has informed me, uh, and, and this is the way it is. And so they believe that they have some kind of carte blanche. Another area where the students feel stigmatized is the Western view that Muslim men mistreat and abuse women. The amount of respect that a Muslim woman will receive from another Muslim man is just, you know, I. I, I wouldn't know what I would be without that because I just, I feel dignified and I carry myself, I try to carry myself in a way that, you know, I am respected and, um, and Islam gives me that and it gives me that confidence and that assurance to know, yeah, I can, I am a, I'm in school so I can be an intelligent Muslim woman and present the religion as it is and not as what people may perceive it to be without actually knowing. Last year, the college graduated nine students. This year, they're planning on 12. Aisha knows exactly what she wants to do when she graduates in 2017. I want to help people. And the way that I think I'm capable of doing that is going into chaplaincy. So ideally, a Muslim chaplain in the hospital. If you have flowers, they will adorn any setting. Every garden, every room, every table. And so we are all about growing flowers. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Lucky Severson in Berkeley, California.